Hi, it's Stuart Fraser, PGA Professional at Nainton Golf. Welcome back to another club review. We've just had arrived today the Sim 2 iron, the TaylorMade Sim 2 irons. Uh, these come in two different models. So we've got the Max and we have the Max OS. Um, noticeably different in looks and apparently different in performance, certainly aimed at, at two different golfers. The OS is obviously a bigger head than the Max and immediately from the top there we can see that it's a much wider sole plate on the golf club than the Max as well. So it's designed to be more forgiving, to launch the ball higher up in the air, but there's quite a lot of other new technology in this head that I'm going to talk you through. So we're going to have a go with the, the Sim Max iron and we're going to work through a few shots from the, the creative bag. Now, the old creative bag unfortunately has died a horrible death and we've been lucky enough to be replaced with a new creative bag. Ping have been generous enough to give us a new creative bag to use. And so we're going to hit some shots out of the new creative bag and see whether this Sim 2 Max iron can actually shape the ball, see whether we can hit a whole array of shots or whether the ball flight is a little one dimensional, which I feel it probably is going to be, because this thing just pops it up in the air. So first of all, we'll have a delve into the bag and we've got a low draw. Now, a draw's no problem. I feel as though this one's probably going to be difficult to hit low though. Yeah, that's really, really high. Got the ball working a little bit right to left, even into this left to right breeze, but I'm going to struggle to hit this low. Let's have another go. Let's have another try with that one. Yeah, that's right up into the clouds. This golf club is going to be difficult to keep down. Hi. Oh, that one's even higher. So the results have shown that this thing is just impossible to hit low. It just pops the ball up in the air. The whole thing's designed to make it make the, the shot easier to play for the golfer, make the golfer's job much simpler, getting the ball up in the air, over obstacles, getting it to stop fast on the green. And this thing will stop fast when it lands because it's coming down near vertical. Well, let's try a couple more shots and let's see if I can hopefully get the ball shaping a little bit in both directions. So let's see what we've got in here. Big fade, so let's try and get this one shaping a little bit left to right. We've got the wind to help us today, which is great. I'm going to need some help because the fade's not the easiest shot to hit for me. However, I've got that one moving quite nicely, so yeah, I've been able to shape the ball a little bit right to left and a little bit left to right, so the, it's certainly manoeuvrable in terms of ball flight, but just expect these golf clubs to hit the ball up into the clouds. They, they don't hit the ball low at all. They're, they're, you're not going to be able to keep the ball down too much, even though they are really, really strong lofted. Let's have one more shot from the, the creative bag. Let's see what we can find. Pro's choice. So I'm going to have one more go at it. I'm going to try and keep the ball as low as possible. See if we can get one that just flies slightly lower would be nice. So I'm going to pop this right back in my stance. I'll try and keep my hands forward. Punch this thing nice and low. And I've maybe got that flying 10 feet lower, but that's still as high as I would hit a normal shot with my iron. So this thing, as mentioned, it's going to be super easy to hit. It feels great off anywhere on the golf club, but do expect the ball to fly really, really high in the air. You're going to get loads of distance with it, but it certainly hits the ball into the clouds. So these clubs are, it's mental how far they go. So I'm getting an average of 171 yards. I've had some go up to 177 and my shortest shot into the wind has been 165 yards. 
I don't think I've ever hit a golf club that travels this far. The ball flight with them being stronger lofted is a little bit lower than the sim max. So that's something to be taken into account. You know, even though the weight is potentially further back with that, that wide sole plate and with a, wide, a bigger cavity, these aren't flying as high as what the other ones do. But there's certainly a distance iron. As I say, it's the longest iron I've ever tried. And it feels really forgiving. Right across the face, an array of different strikes. The, the balls felt really solid coming off the club face with every single one. So one of the best things about this iron that I've found so far though is the looks. Now, something I wasn't particularly happy with with the old sim iron was the look of it. I didn't think it looked great. It didn't look like a premium iron where everything about this iron looks like a premium golf club. It looks like it should. A little bit of carbon weave in the back. It's a brushed steel body generally with a little bit of a shiny sole plate. You can see all the new technology on view. Everything about it screams premium and it looks an awful lot better quality than what the previous Sim Iron did. Again from the top, I just feel as though it's a little bit more visually appealing than the, the previous model as well. So they've done a really good job with producing this iron and, and giving an iron that feels much better quality than, than the original Sim Iron that they brought out before. So I've got the results back from the testing that I've done. I've hit around about 10 or 12 shots with each, so giving them a good thorough test. Um, and both felt very hot off the face. Both performed particularly well. As mentioned, I thought the OS was going to go further. It's two degrees stronger lofted. I felt as though it was flying a little bit lower as well, but both very forgiving. The dispersion with both irons was fantastic. So the Sim 2 Max, to say into a strong wind today, was 161.9 yards average. Now that's a long way for a a 7 iron into the wind for me personally and the overall height was 126.8 feet um, which is a really high ball flight um, but that for me for most golfers the, the golfers that this club is designed for that's going to make it a lot easier to use a lot more playable than something that just knocks the ball out low all the time especially when you get to those longer irons this is the surprising one now the sim 2 os we know it's going longer um, but it's, it's the best part of 13 yards further, 174.1 yards into wind with an overall height of 125.7. So it only really flies a, a foot lower, even though I felt it was flying a lot lower than the max. It only flies a foot lower, but the distance is ridiculous. I've never hit a 7 iron 174 yards into wind before in my life. So this is going to be a really top seller this year. One thing that always sells product is distance. The majority of golfers that turn up for a fit, they want something that's going to go further, going to bring the green a little bit closer to them for the second shot. They want to be hitting a 7-iron instead of a 5-iron because it's easy to use, it's going to be more accurate. This product is really going to sell this year. I've never seen anything that goes those kind of distances that the, the new tailor-made Sim 2 irons is, is producing. And so, yeah, it's a massive shock. They've really produced something with this club and got new technology in the head that makes that ball fly off the face much faster and is still super forgiving and it's keeping the dispersion tight even though it's going an awful lot further than what especially the previous sim sim iron did thanks for watching our review of the telemed sim 2 iron don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more great content coming soon and even comment in the box below as to which one of these two irons would suit you best thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon with some more great reviews